Hello everyone, thank you for joining and we welcome you to this month's Connect with Control-M session. My name is Rafi and I am a Technical Support Analyst. Today we will be discussing the Control-M Application Pack technology, its architecture, and demonstrate some of its functions and features. Joining us as our panelists for today, allow me to introduce Octavio Vasquez and Melvin Abraham. During the course of this presentation, we recommend going to full screen mode by pressing the arrow button on the bottom right hand corner of the player, as well changing the quality settings of your monitor to full 1080 resolution will offer the best viewing experience. Please note that the presentation is available via the attachments tab on the bottom of your screen. For any questions you may have during the presentation, please feel free to post them in the Ask Questions box. We will be addressing your questions at the end of the session. Here is the agenda for today. First, we will be looking at an overview of the application pack, followed by the architecture of the software. Next, we will look at how the deployment feature works for this application pack. Next, we will have a short demonstration on some of its functions and features. We will review what we did in the demonstration. We will have a resources fact screen where uh, we will include some additional information that may be useful to you. And we will follow up with a question and answer session to address your questions. So let's get started. And please remember that the chat window will be available throughout the presentation for your questions. So let's start with the overview. So what exactly is Control-M Application Pack? It is a collection of Control-M application plugins, formerly referred to as Control Modules, or CMs. Now, with this particular architecture, it was designed to simplify the installation the operation and the maintenance of these modules. It's also designed to reduce resource consumption on the Control-M agent. Now this was bundled starting with Control-M Enterprise Manager Server version 9.0.18 base release. And the web and desktop plugins are included with each EM upgrade. So what modules are included in the application pack? Beginning with the base release of 9.0.18, three modules were introduced. We had the Control-M for databases, Control-M application integrator, and Control-M for backup. In version 9.0.19 base release, we added three additional modules, Control-M for Amazon Web Services, or AWS, Control-M for Azure, and Control-M for Hadoop, of course, only on the Linux platform. Finally, in version 9.0.19.100, Control-M for Informatica was added. As of 9.0.20 release, we just got put out GA, no additional modules have yet been incorporated. Let's talk a little bit about the compatibility. So as long as you have a minimum version of 9.0.18 for Control-M Enterprise Manager, Control-M Server, and Control-M Agent, the application pack can be deployed. Now the newer releases are compatible with the current and prior supported versions of the application plugins. Now the application pack itself does not have to be the same as the Control-M Agent version. As an example, let's say if you had a 9.0.18 agent connected to this environment, you could technically deploy an application pack of version 9.0.19. So as long as the agent is minimum version 9.0.18 or higher, both the agent and the application pack are supported and can be installed. Now, if there are any exceptions to these rules, the release notes will contain those specific details, and we encourage you to, as always, read those notes before performing an installation. Let's look at the architecture of the application pack software. Now, we have a single Tomcat web server 
running on a single Java virtual machine on that agent. This is in contrast to the multiple Jetty web servers which were incorporated with the previous control modules on the agent. Now, we use the Control-M agent Java runtime environment, so we don't need individual Java processes per control module. Um, shared libraries and dependencies are in use, and each module is running as a web application via a WAR file on top of the web server. For a visual representation, let's look at the next slide. If you look at the left-hand side of this particular graphic, we start off with the workload automation plugin and CCM GUI, which make up the user interface, followed towards the right where the Control-M server and Control-M Enterprise Manager server exist. Then we have a connection from the Control-M server to the Control-M agent. And I want you to focus attention upon that red oval circle where we see three separate DLLs highlighted. And if you look on the right-hand side, these are the actual control module software packages. So anytime you had a control module, you would have an individual container, which would need Java code, its own DLL to connect to the agent, as well as supporting files and, and directories. Now, in this case, we have three separate CMs installed on this agent. And as you can see, each one needs its own DLL, its own container, which makes for a, uh, a more complex installation. Now let's switch to the next slide where we will see how the architecture of the application pack has changed. Now, in terms of the user interface and the Control-M Enterprise Manager and the Control-M Server, um, there is no difference. However, if you look at the red lines that start from the Control-M agent, you can notice that there is a single DLL or library which connects to a container that is running that Tomcat web server with a Java virtual machine, and all of the control modules are contained within that particular web server. So in this case, we still have three separate CMs. However, they are incorporated into one complete package, and they are monitored via a dispatcher, which connects to the DLL on the agent. Now, since we have a single manager component instead of separate containers, anytime you start or stop the particular application pack, it affects all the CMs. Now, the dispatcher also distinguishes and distributes messages meant for each of the CMs. In order for the installation post processor to migrate the old CM accounts to their new locations, all running jobs must be stopped for this migration to occur. Let's move on to the deployment aspect of it. So, the application pack is distributed with the Control-M Enterprise Manager server installation. There is a CM underscore deploy folder which will contain the individual application pack files for deployment per platform. The application packs themselves cannot be downloaded separately, let's say from EPD or our FTP site. They, are, they come with the Enterprise Manager server installation or upgrade. The web and desktop plugins, they are included with each EM upgrade and no additional action is required to complete those. Via the Control-M Configuration Manager interface, there is a single point of contact where you can transfer install and upgrade the application pack, pushing it to each of the agents within your environment. As well, a rollback can only be performed to a previous version of the Control-M application pack. If you currently have one of the regular CMs already configured and considering a deployment, what we would suggest as a best practice, as with any other upgrade action, 
is to make sure you have a backup of the Control M agent in the event that a restore is necessary. Let's move on to the demo. So in our demonstration today, we are going to go over the deployment process of the application pack. We are going to upgrade an existing control module. We will take a look at the processes as well as the debug and the logs that get generated. And we will go over a couple simple troubleshooting scenarios. Why don't we move on to the demo here? To start off, let me introduce the environment we will be using for the demo. Over here, as you can see, we have a Control-M Enterprise Manager installation on Windows version 9.0.19.200, along with a Control-M server named Prod, same version, same platform. As well, we have a Control-M agent on Linux, Red Hat 7, running that same 9.0.19.200 release. Now, just to take a look at the actual Control M Enterprise Manager installation, here is the installed versions.txt file. As you see, the very first line is the base release of 9.0.19.000, which is a new installation installed as a secondary node. Then, as time passed, an upgrade was performed to 9.0.19.200. Now this corresponds with the cm underscore deploy folder that we discussed earlier where the application pack files are kept for each of the platforms. As you can see, the first set of files here are 9.0.19.000 for each of the individual platforms. And then the second half includes the 9.0.19.200 application pack compressed files. Now let's switch back to the Control M Configuration Manager. Let's have a look at the details of this agent. As you can see, the agent itself has two control modules installed. One is Control M for Databases, version 9.0.00. And if we right click, select Connection Profile Management, we can see that a profile called DB1 is created with a Oracle service name here. Let's just click Cancel there and Close. And the second control module is Control M for Informatica. And just to check the connection profile over here, we see that a profile name of test is defined as well. Let's click Cancel. Now, before deploying an application pack to an agent, it's a good practice to first validate that the Control M server is able to reach the agent. So to do that, let us open up a command window and then run a ctm underscore diag underscore com to that particular agent host name. As you can see, this will run for a few seconds and then it will bring up the output. And we see that the agent status is available and the regular Unix ping as well as the control M ping succeeded and verifies that the agent is available. Next, let's see what control M server thinks what control modules are installed here. So there is a command called CTM get CM and we send to it the minus host parameter with the host name of the agent, the minus application type of asterisk to denote all applications with a minus action of get. And as you can see, what we have here is first the control M for databases component, followed by the control M for Informatica, and of course the operating system. Let's take a look at the control M agent configuration itself. Here I have a remote session logged in already to the agent platform. As we can see, the home directory is over here at slash home slash ctm900ha. If we do a directory listing, let's quickly take a look at the installed versions.txt file. And we see that 
this particular agent is version 9.0.19.200, and it was upgraded. We have the Control M for Informatica installed, as well as the Control M for databases modules. Let us run an ag underscore diag underscore com just to ensure that the agent can communicate with the Control M server properly. And as you can see, this returned quite quickly. It's a transient connection. The Unix ping succeeded, as well as the agent ping to Control M server. So now that we have confirmed the connectivity, let's minimize this window and switch back to the Control M Configuration Manager GUI. From the Home tab, let's go to the Manage tab and then click on Deployment. And then from the Deployment window, let's click on the New Activity. From the Droplets, we select Application Pack, and then Upgrade and Install. We are presented with a dialog box which requires the activity name to be put in. So I'm going to put here Application Pack Installation. The description and the email notification address fields are optional. And then we are followed by two options here. One, we can either just send the application pack to the Control M agent, or we can send and install the application pack to the Control M agent. I'm selecting the latter because we want to push the software and have it installed. Once we have this done, let us click Next. We see our agent over here that we are trying to work on. And if you recall from the cm underscore deploy directory, we actually had two versions of application pack. We want to make sure that the latest is applied here. So we select the drop list and choose the 9.0.19200 application pack. Now, this may present additional agents in the list which can be eligible for that particular application pack version. But for the scenario in this particular demo, we're just going to update this particular agent we're working with. So we check the select box and then click install. And what we will be presented with once we click a refresh button is that the application pack installation is commencing. So first, what happens is that we get a checking of the prerequisite at the agent, followed by the transfer of the actual application pack installation file. Now this may take some time depending on the bandwidth between the Control M server and the Control M agent. We can see the progress of the file transferred to the agent, which is currently 50%. We are now at 77% and climbing. We see that the transfer is complete at this point and it's activating the Control M application upgrade. Finally, we have a confirmation mess message that says Control M application pack install completed successfully. So since we are now done with actual deployment of the application pack, we can go ahead and close this window and then let's take a look at the properties of the agent. Okay, as we can see, the Control M agent now has many more control modules listed under it. However, the previous modules, the Control M for databases and Control M for Informatica are still present. However, when we look at their version on the right hand column, they have been upgraded to 9.0.19.200 the version that corresponds with the application pack. Just to make sure, let's right click, select Connection Profile Management, and ensure that our profile is still present. As you can see, a profile name for, of DB1 still exists here with the service name connecting to the Oracle database. Let's click Cancel here and close that. And now let's check the connection profile for the Control Info Informatica. 
as you can see the profile name of test it still exists and it got migrated the information is still identical to our original connection profile let's click cancel here close and also note that the version of this Informatica module is 9.0.19.200 as we would expect let's switch back to the agent installation directory and check a couple things so again we are in the home directory I'm going to list the files let's take a look at the installed-versions.txt file as you can see here about halfway down the file we have an entry for application pack version 9.0.19.200 as well as all the control modules that are part of that particular pack now for the existing control modules that were already on the agent, the, the directories do not get removed. Let's take a look over here. So we first go to the ctm underscore agent directory, then ctm, then cm. And if we do a listing, what we see is a new directory called ap, and then the existing directories of DB and INF. The DB and INF contain the old accounts files as well as the configuration for those modules. However, the AP directory now contains the migrated information for the modules that are integrated to the application pack. So why don't we go to the application pack directory. I'm going to go CDAP. Let's list the files over here. Let's cd to the data directory, and then list the files again. Now, as you can see, there are individual directories for each of the modules. Let's look at the database directory and do a listing. The accounts.xml file for ctmdb exists over here. So let's back out of here. So now that we know that the data is migrated, we talked previously about a single manager utility that takes care of the application pack. Now, let's have a look over here. We are in the cm slash ap directory again. I'm going to change to the exe directory and list the files in this directory. App Manager is a binary over here. Let's run it and see what we get for the usage. There is a status, a stop, and a start flag. Let's run AP Manager status and see what it reports back. It tells me that the application pack server is running, meaning that the web server and its associated components are functional. Now, why if we needed to stop the application pack for any reason? Let's try AP Manager space stop. Now, we have an issue here because the control M agent itself is started as root and not as the user, and so the application pack as well will run as the user root. I have another window here where I have logged in as root and I'm in the same CMAP exe directory. Let me run AP Manager, stop, and see what happens. Now it tells me the application pack server successfully shut down. Now keep in mind that since we have a central managing utility, all CMs that are part of the application pack get affected here. So once you stop the application pack via the app manager, all the jobs that are running under these CMs will be affected, and the web server as well. Let's have a look at the logs that are generated by the application pack. I'm going to move back to our regular login here. Now we are in the cmapexe directory. I'm going to change back to the control M agent, ctm agent ctm directory. 
after which I'm going to go to the proc log directory. I'm going to do a file listing and going to point out a few files over here. Now, since we stopped the application pack via the app manager utility, you can see on the way bottom that there's an app manager.log file. This is probably the most primary file where you will find information on any problems encountered with the application pack and its manager. There is a Catalina log file, which is for the web server itself. You will see a dispatcher.log, which basically directs requests and responses to the individual CMs within the application pack. And further up in the list, there is also a dbcmcontainer.log, which will contain logging related to the individual control modules, should any problems exist. While we are on the subject of the debug logs, why don't we take a moment to actually create a problem here and see what kind of messages and information is present to help us troubleshoot. So we are currently in the agent CTM proc log directory. I'm going to change back to the CM directory. So first we go to the CTM directory, then we go to the CM directory, then we go to the AP directory. I will now go to the AP web directory. And finally, the conf directory. This is where the web server configuration file server.xml exists. I'm going to rename the server.xml file to a different file name so that the application pack cannot locate its own web server. Now let me switch back to the window where we had the root login. And let's try to start using the app manager utility. Now we see that the application pack server did not start successfully. Let's go back to the control M agent proc log directory. Do a listing on the log files that got written. And I see that the app manager.log got updated recently. So let's list the contents of this file. Now, looking through the error messages from the bottom up, I can already see the message that it's complaining about. Over here, it says no such file exception, and it is pointing to the full path of the server.xml file that we renamed. Now, let's minimize this and see what kind of an error this might present when, let's say, the application pack server is down and you try to view the connection profiles of one of your CMs. Here we finally see the error message that the request failed connecting to the web server, which makes sense. So let us close this dialog window and go ahead and fix the problem. Now let us change that server.xml.save file back to server.xml. Okay, now that we have renamed the server.xml file back to its original file name, we can try to start the application pack server again. Now, rather than starting it from the command line, what I want to show you is that you could actually start it by sending a request from the CCM GUI. So recall that we previously got an error message in a dialog window because the server was not running. I'm going to 
look at the connection profile again for one of the CMs that we know is there. What we will see is that the application manager log will show the server starting on its own. And we see that the connection profile is displaying again with a profile name of test, and we can view its properties once again. Let me cancel the window and close. I'm going to change to proc log and do an ls to list the files. Let's see what happened in the app manager.log. You can see that the control M application pack server started successfully here. One other thing I want to show you here is the actual request from the CCM GUI that was processed. If you notice here, there are some files that are named according to the actual CM itself. In this case, because we looked at the Informatica CM connection profiles, you will see a file named etl underscore infa. Similarly, if you look further up in the list, you can see some for Hadoop, for AWS, Azure, AI, and so on. Let us look at the etl underscore info.log file. And what you can see in the bottom is that an action was performed, which is called ctmcm get accounts request, which corresponds to our connection profile request. So this concludes our demonstration section. Just as a review, we went over the deployment process as it is performed via the CCM GUI. We upgraded a couple existing instances of control modules, namely Informatica and databases. We looked at some of the processes and the app manager utility, as well as the debug and the logs in order to troubleshoot an issue. And we created a scenario where the server.xml file was renamed and so it could not be found. And as a result, it would not restart the web server. And in fixing that, we looked through the logs and we were able to determine the actual error messages. A couple resources that you might find helpful. Let me share them with you. First is Knowledge Article 353177, which includes answers to the most common questions regarding the application pack. Now, also, we must consider that via the CCM, if a user is going to perform the deploy activity, he must have full access level for the configuration and operation privileges within EM. As well, when performing a deploy upgrade on a Windows Control M agent, it must be done with the service user logon as this account if the agent was configured with that account. And finally, for those who use the database module, if you're using a DB2 connector, you want to verify the proper license file per this link from IBM. We thank you for attending this presentation, and we hope that the information provides useful in the daily administration of your control M environment. We would like to encourage you to provide your feedback on the webinar in the feedback tab. Please let us know what your thoughts are about the presentation and possibly any topics you may want covered in the future or any comments and suggestions that you may have. Also, we will be sending you a survey in the following days and would appreciate it if you took a few minutes of your time to fill your responses and send these in. Of course, you may follow us on social media platforms via Facebook and Twitter, as well past BMC webinars may be viewed on BMC communities via YouTube and iTunes. Today's webinar will be posted in a couple of days. We will now proceed with the question and answer session.